Thank you, Aussie. And time to, uh, to bring up our two players, latest inductions into the Tottenham Hotspur Hall of Fame, and I think they should both come up at the same time. Everybody, the great Paul Miller and Graham Roberts. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Congratulations, sir. I think we need to hand over the trophy. See, see, when you got your World Cup winners medal, it was handed to you. There's a couple of awards that you've got to hand out now yourself. It's in between us. Yeah. <laughs> Forget about the the the, the cup, World Cup medal, or whatever. Like I said before, like I said before, um, you play with a lot of very good players, middle players. And I have to say, I play with a lot of very bad players, but the most important thing, no, the, in fact, these two guys were top, top, top of the class, but the most important thing is they're my friends, so this is what it meant at the end of the day. Many congratulations. Ozzy, we're going to need to hand over the trophies, so uh, it would help, you You know, it's it doesn't count unless you've got them, so there we are. Everybody, big congratulations to Paul and Graham, give them a huge round of applause. <laughs> This is Ozzy's Facebook picture for the morning, by the way. <laughs> Please feel free to talk amongst yourself. Uh, we're going to have a little Q and A in just a second. If anybody's got any questions for the boys, I'll have a little chat with them, and then I'm going to hand it over to you. So, any questions at all? Uh, I'm sure they'll be happy to answer. And also, as far as autographs concerned, once we've done this, uh, then both uh, uh, both Graham and Paul are going to head into the one two five room behind, and they'll be happy to sign everybody's programs, anything they need doing. Everybody, Aussie, thank you very much indeed. Also, well done, Adilis. Thank you, Aussie. Yes, take a seat. Take a seat. Get yourself comfortable. We've got seven hours of this to go through now. Paul, what for you? Graham, one for you. Firstly, Paul, what does it mean to you to be in the Hall of Fame? Uh, wonderful, wonderful. Um, uh, it's, I suppose it, it cements and uh, puts the ice on the cake of, um, of, of, of my life here. Um, I was thinking, I've been thinking the last couple of days what I should talk about and what I should say. Those of you who know me, I'm not short of a word or two. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, uh, I just want to. It's just been such a long journey, and uh, you know, Mickey, Mickey uh, spoke before. We, you know, it's 12, 13 years we came here. Um, I'm, uh, Mark Falco's here tonight. Who is, I've known him since I was 11. I don't know anyone longer than that, apart from my family, who I'm so pleased to see here tonight. Wonderful, all of them. And uh, you know, we 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 East End kids, two ways out, sport or crime. Um, luckily, we play football. And uh, luck, luck, so then Tottenham was a nice area actually in those days. But uh, I, 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 I had a little look at other clubs. I went to Chelsea when I was 10. I played for an East End boys team called Semrad, which had produced many really great players and good players, and up, even up to today. And, uh, but I, I, got, I got a call to come and see Bill Nicholson, and uh, I walked through those gates with my dad. We got a bus, two buses, 253149. We never drove then, no cars, no money really. Um, but we came in through the gates, met Bill. Uh, he said that well, they think they could make me a player. I said, well, I'm a player. He said, no, you ain't done nothing yet. I then met Ron Henry, who gave us all our nicknames. He named me Maxi, stuck. And he, uh, he said, by the way, you know, you, he said, I'm an has been, but you haven't been anywhere yet. Because the thing is, you've, when you're 13, 14, you think you've already made it. You've done nothing yet, as we all know that, yeah? And so I came in, in that same ball court, court with people like Chris Hewton, Glenn Hoddle, I couldn't get the ball off him, um, Mark, uh, and Gary Brook, and uh, this was going to be the nucleus of a team that Robbo and Tony Galvin later joined. And uh, <coughs> so we didn't know that then. And it's been, it was a remarkable journey, really. Um, I left school early. I left school a year early. I only went back to play for the school. No one knew I'd left. 
actually, no, no one knew I was here. No, he did, he did. And uh, I actually eventually signed the apprentice, and I'd already been here a year getting money. Peter used to me 30 quid a week, Peter Shreves, which he was like, not handy in those days, yeah? It was expenses. And, I used, and I'd never paid on the bus anyway to get it. But uh, it was, that was great, I and mean, then you, you'd start the journey, and I had three fights the first week I was here. Uh, went home with scratches, and my mum was saying, what's all these scratches? I said, well, it's the full-time training now, mum, it's changed, you know? But, you know, it was, it was, a, it was, the, it was the pick in then, and I got used to it, and uh, we played our first youth team game, went down the pub, had five pints of lads, and all of a sudden I was one of them, yeah? Um, got a bit carried away with the beer afterwards, but that's another story. And then you, then you go, and you... You, 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 it's, you walk, every time you walk through the gates, and even today I walk through the gates, I still feel I'm home. And I've lived in many homes, I've had many houses over my life, but this, is, this has remained as it is. And I just hope the place next door remains as it is, because this has so many special memories for all of us. Certainly Robbo and I, and I forget, the Youth Cup final, you know, to win a European trophy on your own, in your own ground is unique and can hardly be done again. I know it's, you'll be lucky where they have the finals now. But, you know, coming through, and what I want to tell you is that everyone's asked me, what's it like to be a footballer? What was it like in the Spurs days? All I can tell you is, so you imagine, we're all together from a young age. You know, we're having our first girlfriend, we're passing that driving test, we're getting drunk the first time, we're doing all these things together. We then start playing football for real, in proper stadiums with proper crowds, against actually proper players as well, who want to kill you every week, trust me. There were some decent centre forwards who, Want to smash us up every week? Yeah, I'm going to go one way. What a surprise! You, to... <laughs> you know I get home back, Rush. You get to retaliate first. Yeah, we did retaliate first. That's a fair comment, Ozzy. Yeah. But what I'm saying was, we, we then start winning things. We start going to Wembley. We're playing a cup final, which you, you know, we, as little boys, we watched the game from you know eight in the morning to eight at night, didn't we? But you're doing it with your mates. We're going on top of the pops. We're kind of doing that like Blue Peter. We're singing. It's like ridiculous and. Then we win a cup, and then we go and travel, start travelling around the world. And we're getting paid for it. And of course we enjoyed ourselves. But I did it with friends, I did it with my mates. And the great thing, as Ozzy said earlier, we're still great mates, we still play golf together. We still take the piss out of each other. And by the way, there's nothing we can say to each other that hasn't been said before, and you can't upset it. So, because, you know, when you think back 40, 45 years with people, it's a lifetime. And the great thing for me is that I spent my life here, most of it, on and off, and it's still my club, it's our club, and it, actually, this is my extended family, I know two-thirds of the people in the room, I went to school with Jim over there, it's amazing, you know, and we've still we got this thing, we've got this common bond, it's called Tottenham Hotspur, it's tribal, you know, we change things, we don't change our team, and it's still our team, and one day it might be good again. <laughs> but, the good thing, the great thing for me is that, and, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a proud East Ender and, uh, and my family, you know, maybe when it goes down to it and we're going into this great Hall of Fame now, I, I will finish soon, but maybe if people say, he was an East End kid and he did okay, and maybe I contributed a little bit to the great history of this club, you know, and I made a little bit of a difference and that's what we wanted to do and now we're part of it, for me it's a fantastic feeling. Thank you. Aaron, he said, how are you? No pressure, Graham. He did you got 12? Life story, didn't <laughs> <he>? <laughs> now, let, let me ask you, Graham, about, because of course, Maxie mentions Bill Nicky coming yeah. through the door, and, and when you came in, I mentioned the story about, you know, the, the Bill Nick there and the guy coming up to him in Swindon. How true is that? Is it one of those yeah. urban myths, or is that how it happened? And tell me how you remember things. Um, I was signing for uh, West Brom on a Tuesday. Um, we were playing Nuneaton on the Saturday at Weymouth, um, and I just played. We won 6-0, I scored a goal, I came off the pitch, went to West Brom, going to sign for West Brom on the Wednesday, having trained with them on the Tuesday and Wednesday. Um, then I got a phone call from Weymouth. Um, saying that Tottenham had made the offer. I actually dropped the, the pen. I was in Ron Atkinson's office, dropped the pen, 
said, oh, I need to go down the top and talk to them. And then when I came down, I met Peter, uh, met Keith, trained with the first team in the gym. Um, never kicked a ball in the gym. Kicked a few people, but not <laughs> uh, Never touched the ball. An hour and a, well, about an hour. Mickey was in there, lots of the lads were in there. Um, came out, met Keith, and I just fell in love with the club. And uh, my ex-wife, first wife, Mick, sorry, before you got that in, I just want to get that in first. Um, she wanted to go to West Brom, but she wasn't playing football, so I made the decision. So, uh, How can you choose West Brom in London? <laughs> Don't go there, Maxie. Right? Anyway, um, I spoke when I I spoke to Bill when I came out of Keith's office, and and Bill told me the story. And uh, he'd gone to Swindon. The lad on the station had told him, you know, the game was cancelled. He told him to go to uh, Weymouth. Bill went there, watched after game. Got a train from Swindon to Bristol. Bristol taxi. And he said to me, the first, the, the only thing he ever said to me was, don't do anything different to what you did on that day. And I became a Tottenham player. You kicked someone into the rosette, did you? Yeah, that no, it was Charlie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, but you know, I have a lot to thank Bill, I have a lot to thank Peter. and Because Peter, I, was, I came here as a midfield player. And we played Aston Villa in 1980. And Peter said to me, will you play centre half? And I played alongside Maxi. Aston Villa were champions. And we got on and we went on and stayed together. Because wasn't your, your first game was actually, Maxi was out, wasn't he? Wasn't it? No, no, we played Aston Villa. I don't know, did you play in the Aston Villa game? I think you did. You might have. Well, <laughs> All right. You're talking about it was 30 odd years ago, so 40 odd years ago. But it, last week. <laughs> but it, anyway, we, we, we got an understanding. It uh, might have been John Lacey had played in that game, but. Um, but Peter asked me to play centre half, and I really enjoyed it. And uh, I just started a career there. And um, you know, it was it was just great to be in the first team, really, because I made my debut at Liverpool. Um, you can't make any better debuts than that. And uh, my first tackle of the game was put Kenny Dalglish on the on the tarmac, <laughs> um, and they were going mental. And uh, you know that's the way I played. I just I love the club. Um, I love playing football, and I just like to win every game. And how, how how did it work between the two of you then? I mean, was... well, Maxi used to talk them to death, and I used to kick them to death. <laughs> <laughs> That was easy. And, and it's an amazing thing, is that we, we it's a true Cinderella story, I suppose, the fact that you're, you're in Weymouth and then within a yeah. year, you're playing Wembley FA Cup final against Manchester City 1981. Memories of that, both of you? <laughs> Mine was um, three teeth, having kicked out by Chrissy Uting. I'm a bit disappointed he's not here tonight, he could have paid me what he owed me. Um, sort of, I don't know really, I think, the whole episode of that, it was sort of so surreal. It was, you know, Aussie's dream. We made a record. We got to number three or four. No, number, sorry, number one. Number one, I'm oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> Enemy charts. All right, okay. All right, number one, we got a blue Peter badge, which I've still got. Um, you know, and, and then walk up them steps and win the trophy. Um, was un unbelievable, and uh, it will it will live with me for the rest of my life. All these trophies I've got. I, th I think um, I think, and obviously a lot of us uh, not too great in the memories now. It's a long while ago, and I suppose we're we'll getting too many balls. And we'll Talk about yourself. Well, right. so, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, pleased to see you. My here. memory's really good. <laughs> but very pleased to see Bobby Barnes the PFA tonight because I, my, but my mind's definitely going. He's got that red wine you get me every time we have lunch. But. Uh, one of the things I, I do remember is that uh, Peter Shreves, who is obviously a great influence in this from, um, from the youth team right the way through, I think Peter was one of the first people who saw maybe Robbo, God bless you, didn't have the great pace to play in midfield. Plus, to be honest, in those days, we were, we were quite well off in midfield players, so Robbo might have struggled to get a game because we had a few who could play yeah, in midfield, yeah. yeah? I mean, 
It was got tried for everyone else in. Yeah, we couldn't tackle him. Couldn't no, we couldn't tackle him in midfield. So it was either me or Ozzy. Who would you take? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway. So I think Peter put us together and, and, and we started really worked hard at it and we, we drilled all the time. And uh, 